and floor it. Welcome back, I'm Tedward. Welcome to San Francisco and welcome to the 2023 GMC Hummer EV SUV. This is the launch edition. Edition one has a thousand horsepower. We've got this beautiful moon inspired moonshot green. We have the mud tires on 18 inch wheels, air suspension, quad steering that allows for crab walking. And now instead of the pickup bed, we have a usable space in the rear for our luggage. To open that, we've got this little button here. That pops open with our spare, which is very cool. Monster tailgate, not a ton of space. This is a really big vehicle, but what you're getting for space definitely is not one-to-one. -one. So if you're looking for the most bang for your buck in terms of space, this probably isn't it. And I hope this is how you close it. There we go, all right. But it certainly looks the part and it's pretty outrageous. You can raise and lower this air suspension at will, which is nice. And you've got frameless windows or doors, I should say, because this roof comes off. All these panels pop off just like the pickup truck version. It is incredibly wide. Your passengers don't need to worry about bumping into each other. And back here, you've got your climate control, you've got USB, USB-C, all the goodies. Sorry for the lack of continuity, but it does also have a frunk. It's now raining out here, and it's not the most sizable frunk, unfortunately, because it's designed essentially to hold the roof panels in here. So it is usable space, but it's not vast. And when I say that, I mean because it's such a large vehicle, you would think you would get some cavernous monster thing in here, and you just don't. So, you know, Again, this is not gonna be the most practical SUV, but it definitely has a style all its own. And you've also got these tow hooks just like you would find on an old H1, which is super fun. I think the front of the car looks fantastic, especially with all these beautiful lights and stuff. And they did a great job of kind of making this have its own little style. So they spent a lot of time on the lighting of the Hummer because that looks pretty darn good. And we're gonna start it off using the four wheel steering for a U-turn, which holy cow, that's a heck of a lot better than my Honda Civic Type R. <laughs> I could not do that in my car at all. So GMC has gone and revived the Hummer brand. This is no secret. We've seen the pickup truck version of this already. And while it's certainly a functional thing, it's not like the best pickup truck just in terms of cargo space and all that kind of stuff. But this is a great way to reinvigorate the Hummer brand and bring some folks into electrification that would otherwise never do it. Because as evidenced by the Prius in front of us, we know that there's plenty of hate for hybrids and electric vehicles out there. But when you slap a Hummer brand on an EV and give it a thousand horsepower, like we've gotten this one with all wheel drive, two motors in the back, one in the front, it makes people wanna buy them. So if we're gonna have to force people into an electrified future, you can't just give them the, the, the bougie Toyotas going forward. You gotta give them something that they can sink their teeth into and impress their friends with. So while it can certainly do some impressive U-turns, this thing is wide. This really is, you know, it's not H1 Hummer vibes in terms of not knowing where that corner is, but I gotta tell you, just being in traffic, you feel like you're gonna crush whoever's next to you. This is, this is no joke. So if you are somebody who kind of only operates in tight environments, this is going to be interesting. The SUV has a slightly shorter wheelbase than the truck by about nine inches, and that is gonna help. You, know, you guys are good, man. I'm not gonna run you down, we're golden. <laughs> but that makes this a little more maneuverable for parking spaces that's just not gonna be legitimately maneuverable though. I never thought my first time driving over the Golden Gate Bridge would be in a Hummer, but here we are, a Hummer EV at that, but such is the job. A few things off the bat. I'm starting to get used to the size, but these lanes, although plenty wide, feel mighty narrow. The steering is a little vague, but it's light, which makes me feel confident that I can kind of jump around and do what I need to do without having to muscle and manhandle this thing too heavily. I've got the four wheel steering in automatic mode, which is good because that means, you know, for our U-turn, it'll make these wheels turn out of phase. And then when we're on the highway, they're turning in phase. So it makes the car feel shorter and more agile at low speeds and longer and more stable at high speeds. 
Heights. That is such a sick view. You can see all of the dashboard imagery changing, I think just based on the brightness of the sun. So in the tunnels, it was getting all dim for us, but yeah, this is pretty wild. Got some proper fog rolling in. I am hedging my bets on the cement barrier next to us. I'm gonna move to the middle because, uh, you know, I don't really wanna start this trip with a scratched up driver's side. Wow, this is incredible. Look at this. Alcatraz off to the right. I feel like we got here just in time before the traffic is going to get really unpleasant. Road noise is surprisingly not so bad. I was expecting more because in the addition one, we're on the 18 inch wheels with the mud terrain tires. So I was kind of expecting this to be really obnoxious and I definitely hear the whirring, but they're not like our triple eight R levels of, hey, I'm missing wheel bearings. Um, definitely livable with the mud tires. Now that it's pouring rain, we're gonna try the Watts to Freedom mode, which cleverly is WTF. And that is our launch control in the Hummer EV. So we hit this twice, I think. There we go. Continue. Foot on brake. It's lowering. This is taking a while, guys. We got, luckily, no traffic behind us, but things are happening. Okay. And floor it. No joke, boys and girls. That actually gets out of the hole. And zero drama. We're on the mud tires. We're not on the street tires. It's pouring rain. We've got these beautiful three wipers doing their job. And that was like genuinely interesting. So now I've got one pedal driving on, which is a little bit annoying. I'm still not fully adopted myself to the one pedal driving lifestyle. I like it a little bit. We've got all kinds of funky sort of fake noises going on right now. I mean, obviously, these don't make much for noise to begin with, but flogging 9,000 pounds around Napa Valley roads is not what I anticipated to be doing in the rain in a Hummer EV. But hey, we got some good camber, so that should help us. One pedal driving makes it a little easier to keep things sorted out. easiest way to explain this vehicle's purpose in life is like a, a, a purchasable concept car. It, it, it's, it, it makes no sense in so many ways. It's enormous, but it doesn't have a lot of cargo space. It's electric, but it's the least efficient electric on the market. It's off-roady, but if you want to go off-roading in an electric vehicle, you've really got to commit to certain locations because you just can't go that far and bring your own fuel and any of that stuff. So it's proof of life that EVs can be fun, can be cool, and this is as close to a concept vehicle as I think you'll ever be able to buy. Fit and finish-wise, you know, we're not talking about some ultra refined thing. I mean, they've made it durable and rugged, but for $100,000, it can be a little difficult to stomach, you know, sort of like cloth 
durable seats. You might want massaging leather seats, things like that. Um, but you're paying for a big old battery pack and three motors and three windshield wipers, which, you know, I appreciate. There's some cool gimmicky things that I like about it, but overall, it's not like you're getting into a Fisker Karma. You're not getting into somebody's like joke of a rush job to get it to market. It does still feel like it belongs in the world. This is good news for the future of GMC, of GM in general, just because this is going to translate into, you know, electric Suburbans, Tahoes, Yukon, Sierras, all that kind of stuff. And if this is the world that we're going to be forced to live in, well, they might as well be different and interesting and not just all be the same boring sedan with one screen in the middle and some clever little trickery like a Tesla. So I think overall, this is doing a good job of giving us a vibe that if the future is electric, there will be choices and there will be very different experiences because not all electric cars are the same, which has been the complaint about pretty much everything. There's no soul in your electric car. You can't hear it. There's no exhaust. Well, a Taycan, you know, doesn't drive like a Model S and this certainly doesn't drive like a Taycan. The number one thing that freaks me out about it is obviously its size, but the braking performance, because no matter what you do with this thing, it's always gonna struggle to bring the mass back down. You can feel the front wheels get a little bit of scrambling for traction, but see, it's, it's actively changing where the torque is vectored. I can tell that it's doing some clever things to make sure that, uh, I don't send it off a cliff, which is very appreciated. Uh, mostly because I'm not gonna send it off a cliff, but I know that I'm gonna have to share the road with a bunch of these things. And when I'm out driving little sports cars, I, I don't wanna have to worry about this thing careening into my lane. Some other features. We have, of course, a camera for our rear view mirror, but you can still put that there, which is nice because you can still use it as a mirror. Some cars that's completely necessary to have a camera because there's absolutely no visibility out the back. This does have that spare tire blocking probably 40 to 45% of the rear glass. So that is helpful because that makes that disappear and it's focused correctly. So unlike say the MC20, which is a weird thing to compare it to, but I don't have to readjust my eyes every time I go and look for it. Some other things that are just inconvenient about the shape of this thing. Here, let me pull over and show you this. When I put this window down, basically in certain conditions, all the water drops right off of this corner, that edge. And that is kind of a pain. Not the worst thing in the world because you know, you're in your rugged thing. So you can handle a few drips and it's a pretty rugged interior. So it's not gonna get ruined. But if you were trying to stay dry, probably not gonna happen. Yeah, see there, it's limiting. It just pulled power from the front, sends a little bit to the back. catching our Camry for the third time. So it can boogie on some roads and I think it will be a fun party trick for a lot of folks. Let's engage the crab walking. We'll hold this. And now we can drive side to side. And the vehicle is just basically driving sideways because it's turning the front and rear wheels in the same direction, which is a very odd sensation. You can do it at pretty high speeds too, which is great. But yeah, look at this. You just kind of coast across the road. Set up Super Cruise. Look at this, hands-free driving. It's gonna do an auto lane change for me. Look at this putting a lot of trust in this 9,000 pound Hummer to not kill other people because we'll probably survive it. 
It's pretty windy out too, so it's doing a reasonable job compensating. Like, this is not bad. Like, all this road noise you're hearing is because it is gusting like crazy. Look, it's gonna do another auto lane change, hopefully not off of this bridge. Cane Sugar, C and H. All right. I don't know anything about this area, other than there's many bridges. How are we gonna handle this? So this is the stuff that makes me nervous. Cause I'm just like, yeah, we could we could jump that <laughs> at the right angle at the right speed. That's not a good situation. But you know, Super Cruise is definitely the best in the game, in my opinion. I still am not like 100% confident in this stuff, but. Look, if I have to choose one system to be hands-free, I'm I'm comfortable with this. Probably mostly because I spent so much time in the Chevy Bolt EUV, but the Chevy Bolt did not have lane change. So I, don't know, I got used to the way this was happening in the Chevy Bolt. Now that this is gonna switch lanes for me, that takes a little bit of adjustment. And when it does say that it's gonna switch lanes, you get a nice vibration in your seat to give you a heads up, it'll tell you. And if you wanna cancel it, you just hold your hand on the wheel and prevent it from making the change and it'll cancel it right away. But that'll do it. I think, you know, I'm glad this exists because it's kind of a really clever, snarky way to bring back the Hummer brand because this is typically the guy who, well, let's just say it's Helga Pataki's dad from Hey Arnold. He's not gonna be your favorite guy. He's probably a beeper salesman. That's how we see, <laughs> that's how we see H1 Hummer drivers in the world. That was kind of the, the stereotype assigned to them. But now that it's electric vehicle, maybe it will bring some people into the fold and uh, give some life to battery powered vehicles that have different purposes than just saving the environment. So thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive and I'll see you in the next one. Well, this is pretty wicked.